All right, ladies, good morning. Super excited to have time with you. I am so excited to be doing these spotlight conversations, interviews, trainings, and I am thrilled to introduce to you today. Some of you probably know her, but Katie Jordan. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> So Katie and I have been friends for just a couple of years on Facebook. Um, she's actually a former client and she's doing amazing things in this world. So I want to tell you a little bit about her and then we are in for a special treat because she's got some goodness that she's going to share with us. Um, a very kind of proprietary, uh, visionary process that is going to be super powerful. And so um, I'm just going to go into who she is. Um, so Katie is a respected marketing and social strategist internationally. With two decades in this area, her forte is in training and coaching. So her work has seen clients on the NASDAQ, Forbes, and taking their brands global. So she's been mentioned in Forbes and LinkedIn as 10 rising stars in marketing to watch. She was born social before social media came to be. That's for sure. I love her personality and her encouragement. She's just so bubbly. So you're going to love her too. Um, but her superpower is truly in human connection. Katie is a past columnist at various publications. She's a wife, a mom, a business and marketing consultant that brings her clients results through her very own led to listen framework. She wants to encourage you to start with vision for impact. Like Again, where there is no vision, this is, you'll flounder. So this is going to be exciting. And what she does is really unique because she doesn't, there's no other colleagues in this space that works on the vision piece first. So most of, I think the people in this area, they're just like, yep, here's the strategy. But um, this is really for business owners and organizations to cl catch clear vision to de-junk systems that are not serving them and then to build out their business and marketing strategies on a truly solid foundation. And so where there is no vision, the people perish. We have all heard about this, but Katie, I would love to just tell us about your led to listen, led to listen, <laughs> led to listen framework and how it will help others. All right, well, this framework started getting downloaded to me before I even met you, Carrie. It was the, I know you've heard a little bit of the backstory, but things were pretty hard for a while. And um, I would say my family's still coming through some of that. But um, in the fall of um, October of 2019, God told me to go to New York. I was going for a client, but I had a little extra time there. Um, I got to go visit Hillsong Church at the time. And this amazing young gal just spoke vision. She spoke word a word over me that was just incredible. And it lined right up with what God was sharing on the airplane to me um, as I was flying out to New York. And that was just led to listen. That was just the nugget I'd been given. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I was like, I wrote a little workshop on the way there and back on the plane. <laughs> Um, just, you know, because how do you spend your spare time? But this led to listen piece just kept going. And then we headed into the pandemic and Carrie and I met through some other business circles. And um, this framework's kind of been developing out over time and kind of culminated this year truly um, with this framework. And God often gives us things that are easier to do than we think um, and keeps it simple because he likes to do that for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know Carrie teaches that too. And so um, my led to listen framework was God was just heavily downloading to me, like, you've got to start with vision. And that's something that like, a life or business coach would do with you. And I've done exercises with Carrie in her program. Um, but I was like, God was just like, no, you've got to do this with, um, with your people for their marketing business strategies. And so starting with vision is, is the key thing because, and that is one of my key um, favorite verses um, where there is no vision, the people perish. Cause when we lose sight of our vision that often is when things start to go sideways. I love that. You're so right. 
And so, I mean, I know this is a whole framework, but I feel like so many women are like, I have this big vision. Like, how do I even walk it out? Where do I start? You know, I mean, can you speak into that? Like, can you just take that giant concept? Because most of the time, like the desires and the visions that God has given to us, they're big and deciphering how to break it down and step by step. I mean, is there any guidance or anything that you want to say about that? Yeah. Well, in Habakkuk too, too, it says, um, and the Lord answered me and um, said to write the vision plain on the tablet so that he who reads it will run. Mm -hmm. We're going to run with the vision. And so I know that that is a science piece there with um, neuroscience. And we want to pull those pieces together. So we got to write that vision down. But I'm going to even take that um, a little bit of a step back, I guess. And that's just that another mentor um, of mine has said heart wounds lead to blind spots. Mm -hmm. And that is something that stuck with me. I work with people of varied belief systems in my time of my business. And um, this is just something that I think God's used all that season of all these people to bring about, um, to actually just really speak to this, even though they may be receiving it a different way. It's just a way for me to share with them like, hey, you got to check yourself, like what's going on in here? Because that's what's coming out in your business right now. You're struggling because ABC happened, but how can how can you better deal with that? And I mean, for someone that's not um, yet believing, maybe it is um, getting a great counselor or working with a great business coach um, specifically on some things, things like that. But um, really, it's about checking those heart wounds and checking in regularly right and just letting the lord heal us of in those places um to help bring about more revelation oh my gosh yeah so i love how you shared a little bit about how you started in this type of work um what have you learned so far about god through this work through being an entrepreneur well, I have learned that, oh, through being an entrepreneur, <laughs> um, what I have learned is that um, God will bring right order in its due time, in its season. And that's really what this is about um, for me. Our, Carrie knows our um, family's grown through some challenges and still coming through some things. And this is all part of the process and God's just using part of my process to help others now, which is something that he often does, right? He wants us to walk through things so that we can then um, be delivered and redeemed from those things and be able to help others. And so that's what I've seen through all of this. And even um, before we started this live today, I shared with Carrie last week, my week started out really strangely with a pet scenario and then um, really you offered. Get it. You have to tell them. <laughs> okay, really? <laughs> What's okay, mean? everyone. Um, some of you in the group may know that we have pets and we have quite a few pets. <laughs> we have two gerbils. We have a 60 pound labradoodle and we have two cats now. Actually, Carrie, we have a new kitten in the house. <laughs> um, and these gerbils, you know, my girl, she's almost 16, that the hamster had passed away. She just really needed these gerbils. And I was like, well, what's more pets? But they shed their tails like lizards. <laughs> If they feel like it or if they feel scared. And so it could just be like the cat walking past the gauge. Like it could be anything that caused that to happen. But I did not need coffee last Monday morning. I came down to make this discovery. And then the second gerbil did the same thing later in the day. I saw him running in the cage and I was like, oh, <laughs> so I was like, Lord, I don't know what's meant to happen today, but um as I entered my time to start my day with him, he gave me a word for a client that um, is not yet saved. And I've, I've had them for four years in my wheelhouse and they're an amazing client. I love them to, to pieces. They have some challenges going on right now. And I don't even know the details, but God's like, you've got to tell them. And I sent a voice clip. You've got to tell them to put that in a box. I want them to just detach from that scenario happening right now. Mm -hmm. And that um, 
it was very, very specific without getting into too much detail. And she texted me back and said, oh my gosh, I've saved that. I'm listening to it before every single meeting today, because that is exactly what I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And later in the day, she said she raised $200,000 for the company through investors. And I was just like, wow, yay God, like I'm just getting chills retelling the story. And guys, to take that a step further, talking about right order and just being led to listen, this is part of where this is framework has come from, is being led to listen and being obedient then to those next steps, um, is that I was able, my daughter's known this client now for, the kids have known them now, it's been long enough. And um, she, like, it was just a really good download for her and for us to have a good conversation about God and the Holy Spirit. So um, that was totally a gift to me that came out of that story. So beautiful. Yeah. And if that doesn't bring you closer to God or at least asking questions. Yeah. And I'm, I'm able to tell that client, I text her back. I'm like, when Papa God speaks, you got to be obedient. I know like her word is woo woo for what she might do her morning reflection or whatever. (laughs) But um, but she'll say she's woo-woo and I'll be like, maybe this is my woo-woo, but look what transpired. That's God. Mm-hmm. Amen. I don't know. Like, what else can you say? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, I'm like, I have no other explanation. That is the explanation. It's him. Yeah. It can just yeah. be that simple. Totally. That. Yeah. Okay. So, and then what have you learned about yourself on this journey of entrepreneurship, because I feel like there's a lot of women who are still in that starting out spot. And I know that you've been in it long enough that I'm sure you can give some guidance, maybe some encouragement, you know, what is it like? What was it like those maybe first year, first couple years? Like, what were you thinking? What were you questioning? And then how did you overcome it to get to where you're at today, which is running an amazing, successful business? Well, for me, um, those first couple of years were, I'm just going to get something rolling and I'm going to top up the family. Like it was, if I went back to work after having my kids, one whole paycheck would have gone to childcare and it just didn't make sense to be gone for, um, at the time I believed and still do believe in working about a 32 hour work week, (laughs) um, because tax wise, um, It didn't make a difference between 32 to 40 as an employee, but, um, but yeah, so those first couple years were, yay, I can stay home and I'll just top us up. And then things kind of took off because, um, you know, I had my hand in sales and marketing and all the businesses that I'd I'd worked in. I was the assistant director at um, a massage school before having the kids. And so I, I had my hand in all of it and, um, my business rapidly evolved from more of a virtual assistant type business to marketing and social media. So um, there was like a launch pad by inviting a speaker, a well-known author to town. And that just kind of God was like, here you go, <laughs> kicked it off. But yeah, definitely obstacles along the way. Um Obstacles along the way have included just really coming to the realization of how I'm wired. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made. And I think part of God downloading this framework for me is just that recognition and getting help where you need help. Um, My kids and I all have a, a gifted diagnosis, designation, whatever, like it provides lots of wonderful things and wonderful um, challenges as well. And mine happens to be math. But because I was really good at so many things through school and growing up, I was like, I got to learn this. I'm going to figure it out. I got to do it. And I'm in my 40s and I'm like, it's still not working. <laughs> I still get numbers reversed, mixed up, time zones, all the things. And um, and God's like, that's enough. Enough is enough. So He's redeeming that right now. It's still challenging, but um, yeah, just get help with what you need. And I think that is another piece of the framework really is starting with the vision and really um, digging deep with that. So that would be like the first part. The next part then is once you've got that in play, it is about de-junking your business and your systems and what is not serving you. 
Mm -hmm. Um, As we know, we don't need to be all the places and do all the things to make business happen. And, um, and God brings us what we need. He's our provider. And so that next step of the framework really is about that. And um, then from there, what you have left is what we get to work with to build on that solid foundation. Mm-hmm. Oh, amazing. Love that. Okay. And so is there anything else that you just are really passionate about that you just want to make sure that women know either about marketing or business or themselves or this journey with God? Well, I think it's just, you know, definitely um, to really lean in. I, I got wrapped up, like a lot of people will say like, you know, God, God first, then your family. Um, you know, there's a lot of different kind of analogies out there of how to do it, but God really pressed on me in this season um, that I just have to keep doing that work on myself. Mm -hmm. And that, so that still comes back to like the first part of the framework and vision and clearing that vision, um, checking your heart for what's going on. And then with that, um, just kind of moving with, moving with that and um, leaning into him that's the piece that's going to get you further. And so Mm -hmm. the example, even of the client last week, like I was ministering to someone else because he asked me to, and I was obedient. That's my example then for my daughter. And that's what God is using. It's not me doing and me like hopping in the parenting group and consuming all the parenting content that is all wonderful and amazing and great to listen to maybe while I'm working. (laughs) But like, it's actually like, okay, this is what God said to do. He said, keep, keep working on these pieces and you let me show up and you let me show out for everybody else to see. So I think that's, that's a big takeaway right there. Absolutely. And so do you feel like he's always spoken to you like that kind of plainly, like for maybe someone who's still developing that, do you have any guidance on, cause I, I, we know God speaks to all of us. And yet, you know, we have that comparison. Like, I know he speaks to Vanessa very differently than he speaks to me. I still want to be like her when I grew up, but I know, right? <laughs> someone who is just like, I don't know, I want that. I don't know how to get that. Like, where do I start? How do I hear from him? Do you have any guidance for that process? For sure. And I think that process is, um, again, it's starting with where you're at, what's in your heart, asking God. Um, Emmanuel prayer is amazing for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Even spending time, like um, you could almost do your own little mini, like start with a week of Emmanuel prayer. Um, If you haven't, Carrie, you might have a resource for that. You could drop in the group or drop in the thread under, under the Facebook um, replay. Um, but actually like commit yourself in your quiet time before you start your day to that. Um, maybe start with seven days, see if you can stretch it out and just see what God speaks to you in that, because, um, that's invaluable and that like being connected to him, right. Um, is what is going to bring this about. And, you know, the Bible says to ask, ask for these gifts, right. Um, he'll give them to you. He'll let you know. And um, I just want to say, sometimes I can jam on some 90s or 80s music and God will still speak to me through music. And it doesn't matter what kind of music it is. (laughs) And um, just as an example, right? So we also have to look and watch for it. God wants us to do that. So um, watch, look for the evidence and it may be something so still and so small, but it really does speak to you. And you're like, okay, that's God. And he'll, he'll give it to you. He will. He, he's a good father. He wants yeah. to give us good gifts. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Don't be afraid to ask. I feel like I yeah. grew up thinking that was maybe selfish. Um, yeah, he's so loving. He just wants yeah. to shower what we want, what we need, you know? And yeah. So thank you. That is beautiful. Um, 
Yeah. So I definitely like to keep these kind of short and sweet, but is there <laughs> anything else that you want to share before we get into how people can find you? Just any last um, things that you want to leave with us? Um, something that I might also want to leave you with as far as this vision piece is concerned is to remember it's not about us oh. and about um, asking the Lord, like how we can show up for others and what he wants for us to show for others. So when we're doing a whole piece on vision, we're not just talking our business, we're talking family, we're talking friendships, right? We're talking vision for fitness, finances, all of those things. And so asking God what he wants to do and how he wants to use those areas and just keep that in mind, like that it isn't about us. So yes, Facebook user, it is not about us. <laughs> Um, and so with that, uh, you can find me anywhere online, just under my name, Katie Jordan, the way you see it spelled on the screen. And, um, I'm mostly on LinkedIn and Twitter. I do have a Facebook group. If it's all right, Carrie, I can add yes. the link into the bottom there. Cause it's new group. God told me to start it, but it's not really super ramped up yet. Um, as I've been led to listen and build out this framework and program, that's part of the process. So, um, it's not super lit up there yet, but it, it will grow. Oh. Don't despise small beginnings. <laughs> Amen. We all start with one member. I added yes. my sister and then I told her later, I'm like, you're in my group. I needed someone. <laughs> yeah. And I primarily worked in health and wellness before. And so my audience is broader and different now. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've just like, I'm starting everything new. It feels like new. Amazing. So who is that perfect person that would be able to, you know, that you are looking to work with, but they would also really gain a lot from being in your group, from connecting to you, watching what you're doing. Like, who is that person now? Who is that person now? Um, that is a business owner that is um, really been struggling in the hamster wheel. And again, maybe they're a person that's like, I have a vision, I have a vision, but they haven't done anything with it. It's not come mm -hmm. out of them yet. It's not yeah. been written. It's not been put into pictures, whatever works. We talk about that a little bit more through the process and the framework too. And so um, it is a business owner or a organization with a handful of people, maybe even in their marketing department that just need a fresh go over everything and just a real refreshing. And, um, and so really, yeah, really that's what it stems down to. I've always been known as being an out of the box thinker. I've never had sales, marketing, social, none of it earned like media PR stuff. Like none of that is separate. It's all connected. And that is just something intrinsic with me that has to connect the dots. <laughs> and so um, for some people, one area may be stronger than the other. And that's just really what we pull out by using this framework. Beautiful. And so at the end, let's say they do your 12 week um, signature program, like what, what could they expect? Or what would they have at the end? Maybe it's a feeling, maybe it's a tangible result, like what would that look like? Yeah, I think um, for either the business owner or an organization that has a team of people that need to work through this process, it's going to be just really gaining that new hope and that new vision. And that's what's going to drive things forward for them. So it's going to be that realization going into that middle piece of get rid, like we've been doing this stuff and it's not working. <laughs> or we've been doing this that's amazing and we need to do more of it. How are we going to do that, Katie? And that's the piece that we're working through and then building that solid structure um, and plan for your, on that strong foundation at the end. So that's, it's, while it's a process, I think at the end, each and every individual or organization is going to take what they need from that, uh, but it is the piece that's going to help drive them forward. Oh, yes. Love all of that, Katie. Gosh, you are just so wise. I love your stories and I love what you do and your heart for God and your ability to just listen and be obedient. So thank you for being here. Thank you for thank sharing. You for having me. It's so fun. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah, we will put Katie's group in the chat here at the bottom, but yeah, definitely go find her. She is super fun to connect with. You'll love her. And um, yeah, we're going to be doing these on Tuesdays. So come back next week, 11 a.m. Central. And yes. we'll see you then. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, see you. Bye.